everyone. So we are following the trail of palm coin classification in abnormal uterine bleeding. So till now we have discussed about abnormal uterine bleeding in general, the palm coin classification for the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding and also AUBP that is the first cause of abnormal uterine bleeding polyps. So if you have not watched the previous videos, I would request you to watch it in sequence series to get a better understanding. And today we are going to discuss about adenomyosis, the A in palm coin classification. Adenomyosis is endometrial like tissue that is the glands and stroma of the endometrium growing within the myometrium of the uterus. So before delving deep into the topic, let us study about the wall of the uterus. The wall of the uterus is composed of three layers. The outermost thin membranous layer, so this layer outside, is the perimetrium, also known as the serosa. The thick layer of smooth muscles in between is the myometrium. So this, these, this is the muscle, okay? This is the musculature of uterus and myometrium is our primary victim in the case of adenomyosis and the innermost glandular layer the innermost layer here inside is the is the endometrium which undergoes cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle and is shed during the menstrual phase so ideally Endometrium is only supposed to be found in the innermost layer of the uterus here. So it creates problems when it infiltrates into the other areas of the uterus or anywhere in the pelvis. So its infiltration in the musculature of the uterus or myometrium. So this is the infiltration of endometrial tissue inside the myometrium. Okay, so this infiltration of the endometrial tissue into the myometrium is called adenomyosis. So here on the right side, we have a normal uterus. Okay, and on the left here, we have the uterus with adenomyosis. Let us now see the etiology or the causes of adenomyosis. Before that, it is important to know how does this endometrium get into the myometrium or how does this endometrium find a way to seep into the myometrium the endometrium has two layers the functional layer which is shed during menstruation and the basal layer which lies in close proximity just above the myometrium of the uterus so this is just a representation for better understanding okay so the primary cause of adenomyosis is considered to be the abnormal invagination or seeping in of the basal layer of the endometrium into the myometrium. So this endometrium which lines the myometrium seeps into the abnormally seeps into the myometrium. This invagination is facilitated by mechanical disruption of the interface between the endometrium and the myometrium and also due to hormonal changes. Mechanical disruption may occur due to uterine surgeries like cesarean section, dilatation and curatage, fibroid removal, etc. And multiparity is another important cause of the disruption of the interface of the endometrium and myometrium. But it is not that only women who have a history of childbirth suffer from adenomyosis. Nulliparous women are also affected by this condition. In hormonal imbalance, high estrogen levels induce the growth and development of adenomyosis. Now, one very important thing to note is that the endometrium normally undergoes cyclical changes and then is shed during the menstrual phase. So this is the normal endometrium here. It undergoes cyclical changes and when there is the time for menstruation, it is shed. Okay, it is shed during the menstrual phase. And this property is not altered for the endometrial tissue embedded in the myometrium. They too undergo cyclical changes and bleed during the menstrual phase. 
the only difference is that the endometrium inside the uterus has no outlet hence it bleeds within the myometrium triggering an inflammatory response leading to hyperplasia of the smooth muscles of the myometrium this will ultimately lead to a diffuse enlargement of the uterus let us now see the signs and symptoms of adenomyosis first and the foremost is abnormal or heavy uterine bleeding of course we are studying this as a part of abnormal uterine bleeding and adenomyosis is one of the important cause of abnormal uterine bleeding in women of reproductive age group next we have is dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation one thing to remember is dysmenorrhea is a characteristic feature of adenomyosis because of the endometrial tissues embedded in the myometrium leading to painful contraction of the muscles during menstruation uh, next we have is dyspareunia that is pain during intercourse infertility uterine enlargement we have seen uh, clearly what is the cause of uterine enlargement in the previous slide that is the bleeding of the endometrial tissue inside the myometrium triggering an inflammatory response and leading to diffuse enlargement hyperplasia first it leads to hyperplasia of the smooth muscles of the myometrium leading to diffuse uterine enlargement next we have is chronic pelvic pain and pallor and fatigue now pallor and fatigue are primarily the after effects of anemia occurring due to chronic blood loss in abnormal uterine bleeding let us now go through the investigations done to rule out adenomyosis so laboratory investigations are somewhat similar to the ones usually done to evaluate abnormal uterine bleeding which includes a complete blood count which may show low hemoglobin level thyroid function test coagulation profile done to rule out bleeding disorders and now this is mostly case specific and is usually clinically decided but a baseline cbc is always recommended next on the list is ultrasonography okay now the ultrasonography findings that we can typically see in a case of adenomyosis includes bulky uterus thickened endometrium loss of endomyometrial junction myometrial cyst okay if ultrasonography is not giving a clear picture about the diagnosis of adenomyosis we could proceed with doing an mri of the pelvis that helps in giving a better clarity other diagnostic tools include a diagnostic hysteroscopy and endometrial biopsy the definitive or confirmatory investigation is always histopathology examination of the hysterectomy specimen so stay tuned everyone as we will be continuing with the discussion of abnormal uterine bleeding in our upcoming videos do consider to like share and subscribe to the channel if this information was useful to you and follow me on instagram for more such helpful health related topics thank you